to Becky. Becky, do you want to introduce yourself? And, I can um, do. Yeah. Hi, well, thanks ever, thanks ever so much. Uh, oh, good afternoon, shall I say, everyone. Thank you very much, Jim, for inviting me today to share some of my experience in terms of action learning in, um, in a few roles, really. First as um, learning and teaching lead for the business and law faculty down at the University of Portsmouth, but also as a researcher in terms of uh, my focus is degree apprenticeships and also as, as a teacher as well. So yeah, I've used it in sort of a number of capacities and do, do find it my sort of go-to um, when we are presented with sort of difficult problems or need of change. Um, it was my, you know, it is, hopefully it will be time for something new for you. It's my then colleague, Dr. Cheryl Brooke, who really inspired me to try this sort of something new, which was action learning. Um, and I think, Jim, I think you noticed one of my publications um, about it. So we, we started having a chat, didn't we? And um, and I started to kind of share with you my sort of love of action learning. So I apologise in advance and anyone in, in the group that um, this isn't new for you. Um, and the session really is to sort of give you a quick intro session um, into action learning, which give you hopefully sort of kind of new approaches, perhaps to your teaching, perhaps to your research or, or even your sort of kind of everyday problem solving. So the aim really is to provide some understanding of action learning, as I say, so more practically ideas of how you might be able to um, leverage some of this into your research or your day-to-day -day work. I'm, I'm going to share some examples as well with you, but then as Jim mentioned there, sort of give it a go, but sort of nothing to, to worry, we're just going to have a little play around um, with it just to sort of kind of get you going and sort of thinking, actually, you know, this could be for you or, or, or might be for you in certain of the, your, your, the groups that you're in. Now, my interest really um, within action learning, um, I was really interested in the kind of the roots of action learning because having spent the second part of my career in management education, um, it was actually developed to educate managers. Um, and it was sort of Reg Revens who sort of looked into that, particularly using it with sort of NHS, um, sort of some large org, um, engineering organisations as well. So it's, it is kind of widely used in terms of pockets of, of, of areas, but particularly NHS, particularly education, um have, have always kind of used it um, and for that uh, I, I like the way he kind of poses that there can't be any real learning without action and for me this really rang true um, i think there's a couple of people in the audience who know me and i, I sort of really like to get things going take action um, and so it it was very much that um you know if we if we if we go on a course, for example, if you don't sort of use that course and get, get into it relatively quickly, you tend to sort of like, you tend to lose that learning. So that's what I particularly like about action learning. You sort of gain a bit of knowledge, you have an idea, you put that into practice and you make sure there's some application. So it's all very much about application, about taking action, but then reflecting on, well, why did that happen when I did that? You know, how did I get that result? If I tweak this a little bit, would it change? Um, and so then you'd go back and perhaps give it another Re, um, you know, have another discussion with your group or your set. And um, so it's very much about reiterative learning as well. So we keep going back and around and around, hopefully improving things kind of as we go. Um, the other point is, is that it's about solving real problems um, and it's kind of helping to make change. And I'll, I'll give you a few more examples of this a little bit later. But it's kind of important to, to think of, you know, if you do have an issue, firstly, to think of that it's 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 about it's not just a puzzle and what I mean by that it can be easily solved so jigsaw puzzles are a smashing example of this so you know if you've got a jigsaw puzzle and my sister gives me some really tough ones if you get a jigsaw um, puzzle and you kind of think oh I'm never how am I ever going to resolve this um, but actually you because you kind of know there's going to be an answer a solution to this you try different approaches you look at it a different way you go away make yourself a cup of coffee have a look at it in a different direction and you know there's a solution and, and you know lo and behold you get that you know that final solution but with a problem it's slightly different it's that sort of scenario when you've got an issue and it kind of hangs around um, it's the sort of thing you probably see on your monthly agendas at work each week and you think oh we always have a good old moan about that but nothing ever gets done we don't sort of kind of take any action normally because we don't know how to take that action and we haven't kind of focused on it enough so what action learning does is it sort of gives us it sort of presents a, a situation where we can kind of sit around the table and really focus on that that particular problem um, not thinking that we're absolutely going to resolve the problem but that we actually can sort of partially work towards making progress in terms of resolving the problem 
So the idea is that you've got kind of six or so of, your, of, of people that are sort of, and particularly that they've got lots of different viewpoints. That's really important to have that kind of diversity in your team, whether it's their experience, whether it's their culture, whether it's their, um, their, their attitudes, their mindsets. It's really good the more, the more different points of views you can have to, to kind of gather their perspectives and experiences. And then essentially as a group, you work on a live problem. Um, now it can be a problem that is, is more sort of your own personal problem. So in more action learning sets where you kind of help each other and support each other through own personal development, that can be very useful. But it can be a shared problem too. So that you take a look at those problem probably driven by practice and we kind of think, right, you know, let's all get together, let's make a difference here instead of it hanging around on that agenda week after month after month or whatever. Um, let's really take some action here and see what we can do, you know, what's in our control to make a difference. Um, and, and within that, we've got quite a, a safe environment um, and an area that we feel that people are, you know, can question you, they can support you. Um, and it's through that then that we get that sort of like real sort of, you know, we can sit back and critically reflect and sort of think, right, well, perhaps I can try, so perhaps I can try some other areas and, and, and other things to, to take a look at. There are a sort of a few main key principles, um, and it's very much about that learning starts from not knowing. Um, and that sounds a bit of a strange thing to say, but when we think about it, um, often we have a problem and because we don't know, that's when it does hang on the agenda or it's sort of always out there. But we don't we're not we're not kind of brave enough to say, actually, do you know what? I know nothing about this. I don't even know where to start on this. And it's that's through that bravery that actually can start forming some really good sets and, and groups of people together that are sort of interested because what they have got, although they don't know all the answers yet, what they have got is that absolute commitment to try and solve the problem. They're happy to take responsibility and to take action towards that. Um, and that's and that's where we get the learning. So it's like as a group, we're kind of saying that, you know, we've all we've all studied, we've all got experiences. Um, but what we're saying is through our questioning and sort of challenging each other, we have then we're then gaining that learning even more. And that, that's 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 kind of when the magic happens. Um, we also need to be thinking that learning should also be equal to or kind of greater than the rate of change. Otherwise, what we find is we're starting to go backwards because things are changing so much in our environment and, and certainly in higher education um, at the moment. That certainly you know, is in the case. Um, I, I don't want to get dwell too much on AI, but it does offer a really nice example. Um, so I'm sure a lot of us are involved in sort of in teaching teams. I know our teaching teams, we have those that are saying, yeah, you know, bring AI on. I'm interested in it. Let's look at it. And we have others that don't. Um, and what we're finding that in those that are interested is we're naturally asking each other questions. We're kind of sharing um, experiences. We say, oh, don't know about that. We're sort of being brave and honest with each other. Um, and so that's a little bit what sort of, you know, um, um, action learning is about, but it sort of more it, it's it sort of brings it forces people together rather than having those sort of water cooler conversations. Um, and so then we're starting to gain a better understanding because of that, you know, which assessments are AI proof or what's success, acceptable for use of AI for students and so on and so on. But for those that aren't entertaining, what happens is you start to have a bigger knowledge gap because what we've got is this rate of change and it's a, a fast rate of change. And we're, so we, we start to get this real big gap in between. Now, kind of Revens was a real keen to on his um, quite like his equations. And I, I think for, for those that you do like an equation, this can be quite interesting in the fact that essentially what he's saying is that, you know, we've, we've got all this program knowledge that we've had from studying and experience and through questioning, that's where the learning is coming from. And again, if the learning is, is sort of need, needs to be greater than or at least equal to the rate of change. So again, when we're kind of thinking about AI, it's really or any sort of area of problem it is so important to keep asking those fresh questions lest you'll sort of kind of get left behind is, is, is kind of what he's saying so it can be you know kind of quite powerful um, what I'd like to do is get you propose, propose to you to, to actually think about some of the issues and problems that you've got in your kind of day-to-day -day, um, scenarios 
um, you know, just have a just a few minutes just to you know write a few. It's all right, we're not going to share them, um, but write a few um, points down in terms of some real issues you feel like you've got at work. So be careful to kind of avoid the technical problems where you know it's the jigsaw scenario where we know there is going to be you know with, through time and procedures and asking the right people we'll be able to solve them. But take a look at more the adaptive problems that you might have. Um, I suppose the easiest way to look at this is it tends to be more people related. On the whole, they tend to be the real sort of what we would call wicked problems. So that might be worth taking a look at. Um, and also, it's uh, again, it's those no ready solutions. And I would probably update them and say you can't find the answers in books, but also not on chat GPT. Um, so, again, it's that sort of difficult problems that you've got in your working life. Hopefully sort of two or three things might have automatic, you know, might have been involved in a meeting this morning. So, oh, God, are we ever going to you know, resolve that one? Um, that's the kind of thing that might be or hopefully in the next few days that you'll have something. Think, Gosh, that, that's really tough. Perhaps we do need to get together in terms of action learning. Just one or two, give you another few minutes. Okay, so I'm kind of hoping at this stage you've got a few ideas of kind of issues starting to wear around in, in your brain. Um, I just thought this was quite a nice one because either we've all been through the school system or perhaps we've got your parents of, you know, we've got the children um, and that we're sort of quite associated with school. But you can start to adapt this to find other problems. Um, although it's, you know, it's particularly, you know, it's got a bit of age there, 2011. But I think it's quite nice how to deal with angry, demanding parents. But, you know, I suppose in, in the in, in higher education, we could say how to deal with um, you know, demanding students. We could be saying how to deal with um, demanding staff, for example. Um, this is one that we're looking at in our in our, um, our faculty at the moment. It's how to implement standards of learning throughout the school system. So uh, without our universe, our faculty system. So we're trying to get that um, consistency at, at sort of you know get, getting a better approach amongst each of the schools. Um, so that's kind of one that we can adapt to sort of help us find or identify the wicked problem that we're trying to define. It's quite important to define the problem, take some time over it. Um, I think one problem that we've all got is how to balance personal and professional lives. I think that probably is one that probably rings a bell with a few of us um and also in terms of um in terms of sort of you know interruptions and just sort of our day-to-day -day management so again with that we can sort of start to um kind of help and come up with the the different um different problems that um are, might be a mutual problem with a, a group of, of other, you know other people it might be an individual so what happens in the set well first of all you would have a meeting um, you'd, you'd meet up, you'd probably lay, you, you do really need to lay some ground rules because to have that safe and trusted environment, because actually you are talking about emotions, you're talking about the things that really sort of anger you, the, the things that you find really difficult and frustration. So again, you do need the ground rules. Um, and they are normally sort of, you know, common sense as you expect, but it's just making sure that you've got that settled. The other thing to remember is in the first meeting, you would sort of obviously get your introductions. You might be a group that is known to each other. And this is what's quite nice about um, action learning. There's flexibility. There's no right or wrong way in terms of how you run the sessions. So it, we've already said it could be that you're presenting a problem, a, a group related shared problem. It could be individual problems. That's You could have your first meeting online. It works very well online. You could have it face to face. Um, so again, it sort of represents different ways of, of doing it. But, on the whole, what you would do is you'd ask for a volunteer and that volunteer would kind of share their share their problem or how they see the problem. They then speak um, with um, absolutely uninterrupted. Now, this is really difficult. It's much harder than you might think it is. So the person sort of speaks for sort of two, three minutes or it can be you, you can say to the person you can speak for as long as you like um, about the problem. Um, but do bear in mind how long you've got, because sometimes I've had sessions where people have spoken for about half an hour about their problem each. And so, you know, the sessions, so it is worth to be mindful of time. 
but but what you find even in sort of five minutes the rest of the group that are listening and so it's a lot about active listening here is about the it's is, is you're actually bursting at the seams to try and help them and resolve their problem so oh i know that you know all you need to do is X, Y, Z, but it's not like that. The sort of the way you go about the problems is far more coaching. So it's about the volunteers sort of looking at different ways of doing things for themselves. Um, so what happens after the person has had their sort of that they've shared their problem? There might be one or two questions that you um, that you have clarifying questions. But on the whole, then the idea being is that those are listening um start to to write down some questions um, i've seen this done in a number of ways and, and one way is sort of literally just writing on post-it notes is really good and i'll show you a little example of that in a second but that can work really well or it can be if you kind of and it's quite nice if you're you in the group and it's a bit of an anonymous group that works quite well if you sort of really know each other um sometimes it's quite nice just asking the questions but the idea is the volunteer then sort of kind of collates the questions in, in some shape or form, either by writing down or they've got the post-it notes in front of them. And almost starting to think of, say, the 10 or so questions they've got, thinking, right, which are the ones that really they would like to answer? So they don't have to answer every question. They can do if they want. They don't have to answer every question. So it might be, for instance, they get a question, what steps have you taken so far towards your problem? Um, and it might make me think, well, actually, well, I've done this and I've done that, but actually perhaps they've got a point, perhaps I haven't explored, perhaps I need to go back to basics again and think of other ways how I can look at the problem and take different sort of techniques to try and solve the problem. So that would then be my action from the question that I would then take away um, in the following week. I would um, give a bit of a practice, I experience that, and then I would report back to the set in terms of, of how, that, how that went. Um, another example is, you know, why is this problem important for you? Um, so it could be that you've not sort of, sort of you, you feel it's important to you, but actually you could be thinking, well, actually, good, great question. Who else is it? Is it, is it me that's getting tied up and see it as an issue or does everybody else, you know, does everybody else accept how it is? Um, you know, what do my managers think of that? So I'm going to action myself to perhaps go away, talk to my managers and, and ask them the question, how important is this issue for you? And again, you'd go away and you'd find out. So what you're doing is you're progressing each week. Um, another common word would, would what be the ideal outcome for you? So you really sort of know where you're going with your, your, your actual learning journey and what you're really expecting to how, how you're going to view and solve the problem. So again, it's, it's, it's it's reiterative so you would keep going around in in kind of circles um which would um which you'd sort of catch up in subsequent meetings so it's about getting back with your action learning set reflecting on it um and then sort of setting new new actions as you kind of go through um just a few examples from you from my sort of different areas um you see here you can see the post-it notes so that was a, a number of the actions that was used within teaching so essentially i work with working with degree apprenticeships one of the things they have to do is they have to solve real life problems in their own organization and so what we did was we got them together we got them using um this action learning style process within the teaching um which actually sort of spurred them along and because we've also found that what we found that they were they actually were very motivated about it because they didn't want to go back to their action learning set and say, oh, God, I haven't done anything this week towards my project. Um, so actually, they felt it, it made them feel very accountable. Um, and they'd come away from each of the sessions with a whole list of sort of, right, must do that, must do that, got a new idea for that, more than they'd thought of themselves. So really sort of pushing that action out a lot further and hopefully, you know, really helping their projects along. Um, there were some other sort of it was it's interesting because um, I've done some other um, work on degree apprenticeship identity and it was the power of the peer learning group that actually really gave them that and that they got a lot out of that and it was the action learning set that really helped that along and a way of um, sort of a you know, teaching initiative that really kind of helped them. Um, and they found that you know they felt very comfortable in that safe learning environment some you know really nice little quotes here from from the research in that you know they, Quite, quite nice they call themselves the geeks but they're actually a very close group and, and they would absolutely ask really quite direct questions but in the safety of that group but that was great because they were sort of kind of pushing each other out of their comfort zone so they could actually kind of learn more as they went along um the other thing was sort of kind of different perspectives was really important so um you know within this case there was somebody who was that sort of with a, in an actual learning set, somebody who had loads and loads of experience and someone with relatively new into it, you know, relatively new experience. And it, it was great because they never kind of told them what to do. They actually made the, the person with less experience sort of, you know, 
in a coaching type style actually right do this this and this and it sort of that really helped the, their their different perspectives but also again built a real built some real confidence as well um no longer an imposter yeah real sense of belonging we're all working a sense of belonging in terms of our kind of gathering our, our students together so again that was really helpful because you had that trust within the set sort of helped help by the ground rules but um really felt like they had somebody to turn to um they could kind of admit that it was struggling they were admit and yeah yeah so am i you know it was those sort of conversations that sort of took place which was which was kind of great for great for, for learning too Another example was from my research. So I use I use le um, action learning as a research method methodology. Um, and here I was working with degree apprenticeship ambassadors and probably what I would I, I would sort of refer to them as the the organizers of apprenticeships um, with an organization. So um, they were the leads. Um, and we started to take a look into this because obviously degree apprenticeship at, um, being quite new at that point, um, it was really complex. It's always historically been very complex to to work with other organisations within higher education. And but how are we going to bridge those gaps between management education and work based learning as well? So that's the kind of thing that we we looked into, um, which was we you know we we worked together and we had this sort of joint kind of joint interest to make sure that it happened that actually the learning that the, the, the you know the, the apprentices were doing was actually making a difference in their own workplace so that was quite interesting I won't go too much into the fine of that because obviously that's but the actual learning set was great because we actually collected all of this data because of the systematic cycle of planning action observing and reflection which is the kind of the action research and the narrative from that from each of those sets we would then I would then sort of kind of take away and look at in detail um, and so that we could answer, I could answer some of the research questions, how might, you know, action research assist in fostering workplace learning using action learning sets. So again, it was it was very helpful to say that, you know, actually the, the, the trust um, that we built with the with all between all of us because of this common purpose um, worked really well. And we got some fabulous, you know, fabulous initiatives um, to be able to, you know, to share with others as well as as, you know, as well as our own group. The other areas was something I've done a little bit more recently is working with colleagues um, in terms of the academic integ integrity awareness. So obviously, you know, an, an issue there. Um, so I worked here with the academic regulations team. So I kind of facilitated sessions to uh, essentially the problem there was to address the lack of understanding of the regulatory reg, 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 regularity. Uh, regulatory I can't say it you know what I mean regime for assessment and risks in students um, so basically what we were trying to do is make sure that students absolutely understood that you know if they were to plagiarize and so on that there were going to be consequences and we thought well actually we do sort of you know we, we do the usual you send it out in induction but actually there's a bit of a case that we needed an academic integrity awareness campaign um, and we've got certain findings that so again meeting as ground rules really explored the difficulties and identified the problems then through a group we start to you know we started to cut this down into themes we looked at each themes we looked at the fact that we needed to do sort of kind of drip drip marketing almost as throughout the course and there was different stages but we also needed to make sure that um, they understood the just and make the, the messages far simpler um, to, to give them you know policy that they think well I'm not going to cheat why am I going to look at that so and when it comes to crunch point then they're actually not quite sure what is right and what they can and can't do um so yeah so we sort of kind of set that up and then part of the actions we took was also to 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 share our resources with other staff and also with other students um and we kept going a little bit further actually sharing it again with students unions as well and and because we found actually we had all these sort of quite nice resources but actually how do we make sure that the student still gets to to meet them so that again became a, a, a kind of an additional problem that we hadn't actually realized in the beginning but as we worked through the sets and sort of Rich was thinking ah you know we've got to share all of this um, which we then managed to do um but, um so essentially just sort of showing you through things there so I don't know if people want to we've got 16 people so it might be um Jim I don't know if we can break up in uh do we have breakout groups in in this yes we do yeah oh, yeah brilliant it might be easy if we do um and sort of kind of start setting up some some kind of smaller breakout what, groups perhaps. what size do you, do you want probably about five and you know, yeah probably five groups of five would be would be good um but individually it's kind of you've you've written already done part of it because you've written down and sort of you've got a number of examples in front of you 
Um, and so then you think that it's not going to be easy to solve. You might just want to pick just a, you know, not too serious a one, a nice quick one today might be appealing. Um, but write down what makes the problem difficult. Have a little think about that. Um, and then what we can do is sort of start to frame your problem. And the easiest way to frame a problem or a question is how do I, what can we do? You know, um, that, that sort of kind of helps if you sort of, how do I solve the problem of um, you know, academic integrity, for example, um, that kind of helpful as well. I'm hoping everybody is okay with that. Um, and literally then if there's sort of four or five of you in the group, sort of one person just to take the lead and just sort of describe the problem for a minute um, and the others to actually experience the oh I've got to keep quiet now <laughs> okay. and then online the really good thing about online is you can probably put some questions in the chat once that person is finished so we might only have time for kind of a one or two rounds um, but if we'd like to give that a go um, and I can pop in hopefully Jim can I to the yeah to I'm the sessions I'm gonna drop you into into one um, uh, how long do you want to go for this Probably about 10 minutes, shall we? Yeah. 10 minutes. Here we go. Okay. Mm-hmm. 